<clears throat> My fellow Americans, what the f is wrong with us? I know this country was founded on collecting together a bunch of bullheaded individualistic xenophobes, but we can do better. We need to change from imperial measurements to metric now. It's been more than 50 years since we started the transition. I mean, we went from the Ford Model T to men on the moon in less time than we've needed to make a change in our measurement system. I know, I know. It's too hard. I don't get it. Wah, wah. Well, suck it up, Snowflake. I don't see any of us baffled when we go to the store and pick up a two liter soda. And yes, I do remember when we used to have half gallon sodas. So we can make the change. Hell, we even get a little more sugar water in two liters than we do in a half gallon so you get to feed that expanding waistline. Guys, you can be bigger. Everyone gets to weigh less and we get to drive faster. What's there to lose except replacing a baffling system with one that actually makes sense? Quick, how many tablespoons in a gallon? How much does a cubic inch weigh? I don't know. <laughs> Do you? Uh-huh. If I ran for president, making the US metric would be number one on my platform. Why? If we can get a bunch of pig-headed America First yokels to agree that they might be wrong and some foreigners might actually be right, then we could solve just about all the problems in this country. Kilometers for peace. Leaders for love. Whew. Okay. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. This channel is dedicated to finding out whether I really do know it all or not. Definitely make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy this video, and make sure you ask me questions in the comments or at my email address. So obviously that opening was somewhat tongue-in-cheek, but I do actually have a bone to pick with the United States, which is one of a whopping three countries in the entire world that is not on the metric system right now. Um, that would be the US, <laughs> Myanmar, and Liberia. Come on, guys. <laughs> we can do better than that. With like 360 million people in this country, we can definitely do better. I think one thing that's really interesting to note is since 1859, the United States has officially been a metric system country. So actually, we don't even have to make any changes. We just have to implement the metric system. It's sort of a usage thing versus an actual system thing, right? Uh, I think the United Kingdom is in a somewhat similar situation because they still use imperial units, which they invented, by the way. Um, that they still use that even though they're officially metric, but they're much, much more aligned with the metric system than the United States. Every once in a while when you drive by those bank signs, and actually I think they're doing it less now, but it usually has something like 85 Fahrenheit and then it switches over and says like 30 centigrade. Uh, so, you know, these things do exist. This country does have metric system capabilities. We just have not had the political or societal will to make it happen so far. What's the reason not to change? Well, I think number one is just America first, right? It's like we don't really give a crap about the rest of the world, even though everybody else, literally everybody, uses the metric system except for us. We just don't care. Uh, so that's probably number one. Number two, there is some pain involved in this, right? There's a, there's a sort of infrastructure pain that I'll talk about in a little bit, but there's also, I think, the mental pain of everyone having to switch over. I think the mental pain is way, way over exaggerated. I've done it myself. I've switched over to using metric almost entirely and it's really not that difficult. Why change? You may think like, well, what the hell? It all works out fine. It's no big deal. Uh, number one is the metric system actually makes sense. The imperial system is made by the British. They brought you cricket, which is a baffling sport, and they brought you the monetary system, the original pound uh, shilling, hey penny, blah 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 monetary system that actually took an advanced degree in math just to make change for somebody. So therefore you've got a system that just doesn't make any sense and I think it, it is incredibly helpful to have a system that all is just in powers of 10. You know, a kilometer is a thousand meters, uh, a meter is a hundred centimeters. It's just super easy. A thousand milliliters is a liter. It's actually in the name. Milli means one thousandth, and therefore you have a liter, right? So all of this stuff makes sense. It's very, very easy. Instead of having every time they say uh, you need two tablespoons, but you happen to have a teaspoon in your drawer, and you're like, well, how many teaspoons is in a tablespoon? If they said 
you need a half a liter and you only had a milliliter thing, that's easy. It's 500, right? So you can do all of this stuff in your head instead of needing some sort of diagram or something to explain all this to you. So that's definitely number one. Number two, this is kind of a weird one, but I mean, the name of it is it's an imperial measurement system. The metric system is a democratic. It was produced by France during the optimism of the democracy movement in the early 1800s, late 1700s. And so it's a democratic movement, whereas the imperial system is imperial. So it's got a lot of colonialist baggage on top of it. So that's a really good reason to get rid of it entirely anyway. Hell, I mean, even England, which is the country that came up with this, is getting rid of the imperial system. They were the imperialists. Also, the metric system relates all of the units of measure. So, for example, one milliliter of water at standard temperature and pressure, one milliliter of water is one gram, which is one cubic centimeter. So all of those things are pretty easy to figure out. Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> a gallon is a certain number of cubic inches, I guess, which then weighs a certain number of pounds. But how much all those are, I have to go and actually look up all of that information. So all of these things in the metric system are just so much easier. You can even move between different measurement elements without having to go to a book and try to figure out how much each of those conversions is. Another reason, of course, is that America will actually end up getting with the rest of the world. And that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Playing nice with other people is a good thing. So I think that even there, even though there's this kind of America first attitude, we don't have to go that way. We can, we can go a different direction. We can be more cooperative with the rest of the world. We can be less xenophobic. All of those things would be helped by having the metric system in place. Also, for people who own tools, what a great thing to be able to get rid of half of your tools, to not have to purchase an imperial set of socket wrenches and a metric set of socket wrenches, which I'm sure people in the rest of the world are like, you have to do what? <laughs> you know, like a socket wrench set is not a cheap thing to buy and to have to get two of them instead of one is just ridiculous. Same thing for drills, same thing for crescent wrenches, etc., etc., etc. You have to buy two of all of these different kinds of tools because of the measurement thing. We also don't have to worry about breaking things like losing a, a billion dollar spacecraft to Mars because of an error in a conversion between metric and imperial units. If everybody's just using metric units, we're set, all good. We don't have to worry about that stuff. So that would be fantastic too. Lack of breaking things, always good. We also don't need to worry about conversion when traveling. If you go to Canada, or certainly if you go to Europe or, or any other country in the world, everything's in metric there anyway. And so I think a lot of times US people are like, oh gosh, what do I do? I don't have a clue how to convert all of these things. If we are already on metric, that's just one less thing to have to worry about. Also, we can't really tell numbers anyway. If you think about it, like what's the difference between a yard and a meter? I, I mean, I know there is a difference and it's about three inches, I think, or something like that. But anyway, it, it you can't really tell if you're pacing off something, like without an actual measuring rod, you can't really tell meters. You certainly, can't really tell a kilometer or a mile by walking. I mean, maybe, but certainly if you're driving down the highway and you're going say 40 miles an hour versus 45 miles an hour, if you're not looking at the speedometer, you can't tell. So why not just drive something like, you know, 80? It, it would just have a number 80 on the speedometer instead of 40 or 45. And that that's just it doesn't matter, right? If you have to look at the speedometer to know how fast you're going anyway, who cares what the actual number is on there, as long as it matches the sign on the road. Uh, which is another tangential benefit to all of this. I mean, here's a huge infrastructure project that the United States could undertake. Just replacing all the highway signs with kilometer signs and kilometer per hour signs as opposed to mile per hour signs would be a, a huge undertaking and would be a boost to the economy because it would be a lot of signage that would have to be made and installed and so forth. So that's a, a positive, especially right now when unemployment is a significant issue in the country. So let me give you just a little bit of a, a, a sort of a cheat sheet, right? So I think centigrade is the one that really bothers people the most. I don't have a problem with it. Um, here's a system where zero is freezing and 100 is boiling, which makes so much more sense than 32 is freezing and 212 is boiling. That's like a bizarre thing and 180 degrees is in between it instead of 100, right? So my cheat sheet is this. If it's under zero degrees centigrade, it's freaking cold. <laughs> if it's zero degrees centigrade, it's cold. If it's 10, it's chilly. If it's 20, it's very, very pleasant. If it's 30, it's warm. And if it's 40, it's bloody hot. 
like, you know, going to Saudi Arabia in the summertime, kind of hot. So that's it, right? So that's just nice, easy thing. There's four different, well, five, I guess there's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. And so that's, that's just how you can work it out. And it makes it really easy to remember, you know, if you see that it's going to be 15 degrees out, you know, it's jacket weather probably, but getting towards being pleasant. So there you go. So in the introduction, I kind of joked about like, you know, guys getting bigger and so forth like that. But it's honestly true. Just think it sounds much more impressive to say I'm 15 centimeters than six inches <clears throat> without putting too fine a point on what those measurements mean. Uh, also, it's really cool to be able to say I weigh 80 kilograms rather than 175 pounds. It just makes you sound thinner just like right off the bat. And just think you can drive 90 kilometers an hour instead of 55. So it seems like you're going faster then, right? So there's some psychological advantages to it. So I would say like, yeah, you know, <laughs> bonus time, right? So in conclusion, yes, it would definitely take work like physical work, but also mental work and mental, you know, discomfort to go through this change. But it's definitely possible. Everybody in the rest of the world has done it already. The metric system didn't exist before the 1800s. So everybody else did it. We can do it for sure. I would say within 10 years, it would be a very easy thing to change over. And in most things, it would be faster than that. It could be done within a year or two. Then we can join the rest of the world and laugh at Myanmar and Liberia. Uh, unless, of course, they beat us to the punch, right? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, definitely mash the thumbs up button so other people can find it and subscribe to the channel if you want more of these fun videos. And definitely make sure you ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is knows at gmail.com. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>